welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you my labour and delivery story of baby number two, baby girl. Um, her name is Alethea Catherine and um, this was a much more dramatic labour and delivery than my first time around. First time around um, I had a membrane sweep at 3pm, then about 6pm started getting those early labour sort of cramping feelings and then I had my baby the next day at 10 p.m. So, so from the early labor to actually having the baby was sort of eight, about 28 hours or so. Um, this one was a lot, lot different. So you'll know if you watched my pregnancy updates that I was getting Braxton Hicks from, I don't know, like 35 weeks or something. And at first it was just the tightenings, but from about 38 weeks, it was like actually painful contractions and kind of 40 to 41 week mark. I was getting more, they were getting more intensive and um, they were lasting longer but they were still stopping after 20 to 30 minutes so I knew it wasn't the real thing. If you watch my 41 week pregnancy update you'll also know that I had a membrane sweep at 40 plus 4 and this baby girl arrived at exactly 41 weeks so 7 days overdue. Um, she arrived on the 18th of June which in the UK which in the UK is Father's Day, so that is the best Father's Day present that my husband will probably ever have in his life. Um, but she was due on the 11th of June, so exactly one week overdue. So I had the membrane sweep on the Thursday. She didn't come until the Sunday, so probably the sweep didn't work. They generally say that if it works, you'll go into labour within 48, 48 hours. So I actually think she probably would have just come on her own anyway. If you can hear screaming in the background, my three-year-old is currently running wild. So yeah, we'll see what the damage is after I film this video. In terms of when labour and delivery sort of actually began for me, like I said, I had early labour contractions. When I had that sweep, I was already three centimetres dilated, which was a lot further along than I expected to be when I had my sweep. So I really thought the sweep was going to happen quickly, but it seemed like I was in early labour for about two weeks. Um, but then I was definitely in active labour for not long at all. So let's move on to when things really started to move along. It, ha it was the Saturday night and um, Saturday the 17th of June and I was putting my three-year-old, on now three-year-old, to bed. Um, so it was about 8pm, I was reading her story, tucking her in and waiting for her to fall asleep. I usually wait for her to fall asleep before leaving the room. And I could start to feel those contractions coming on again and I've been having them for weeks so, you know, I didn't think much of it but while I was kind of reading her stories and things, I was trying to ignore it, but they were pretty sore. Like they were getting more and more and more painful. And I was probably in her room for about an hour um, between the whole pajamas, getting her all ready. And that whole time they were getting more and more intense and they hadn't stopped. Um, so when I came out of the room, it was probably about half past eight, been going for about an hour. And I just said to my husband like, maybe we should make up the spare room just in case someone has to come and stay because I'm getting contractions and they haven't stopped and they're getting pretty, like, not really, really painful. I mean, I could talk through them, no bother. Um, but I'd been timing them while I was waiting for my daughter to fall asleep and they seemed really close together. They were like five minutes or less at that point already. Um, and they were ranging from sort of maybe like 25 seconds to over a minute. So they were quite inconsistent in length but they were definitely consistent in how often they were coming, how regular they were. So um, I got my husband to make up the bed. I went downstairs and got the birthing ball because I thought, I didn't want, do not want these contractions to stop. They've stop, started and stopped for the past two weeks. I really want this to be it. I'm getting on that birthing ball. I'm doing everything I can to keep them coming. Um, when they hadn't stopped by about 10.30 p.m., my husband phoned my mother-in-law and she came over. He went and collected her and she came over um with her overnight bag because we felt like something was going to be happening now and um, they obviously hadn't stopped by that point i also phoned ahead my hospital and um, my midwives because i was given birth in a central midwife unit with no doctors and it's also a midwife unit that is um like it doesn't have any staff on hand out of hours and obviously this was out of hours by this point and therefore they're on call so i had to notify the midwives that they might get called out at some point during the night. So yeah, I just kept going on the birthing ball, trying to drink as much water as possible. And about midnight, I phoned the midwives again and said, okay, they're getting 
really, really, they're really consistent. They are lasting a longer time. They are, um, they're definitely within the bracket of when they tell you to phone the midwives. So they were lasting about a minute in length. They were every three to five minutes um, and they just kept on coming. They were coming and snowballing a little bit. So, I, but, I, but I did say on the phone to the midwives, like I'm not in that much pain. Like I do have quite a high pain threshold, but I can talk through them. I'm not struggling with them. Like I don't have to stop and like close my eyes and grimace. It, like they feel like pretty bad menstrual cramps, but you know, I can live with it. But they said, given that it was my second baby, I should go and get checked anyway. So they called the two midwives who are on call out and they take around 30 to 50 minutes to get to where they are supposed to go, to the hospital, to the central midwife unit. So you're supposed to give them a 50, to, 50 minutes to one hour's notice, which obviously is not necessarily that easy when you're in labour. But um, So we, we probably met the midwives about half past 12. They were quite quick in getting there. I got checked, I was four centimetres dilated, I could still talk through my contractions. Um, the midwife did confirm that the baby's head was very, very low, but I was still only four centimetres, so she said, you can stay if you want, or you can go home, you know, and probably progress faster if you go home, and you're relaxed in your own surroundings. Best thing to do, she said, was go to bed. Um, lie down, try and get a little bit of rest, Sometimes just when you relax and rest, that's when things progress the fastest with labour. So we said, okay, great, um, we'll go home. And the car on the way home, I did notice I was getting a little bit more painful, um, which is always the way, that's always the way with me when I go to the doctor, my symptoms stop and then they start again when I leave. I don't know why that is. But anyway, um, that is kind of what she said, actually. If I stayed in the hospital, I'd probably labour longer because for some reason, um, I think it's maybe just like the anticipation, the excitement, your body clams up a little. So yeah, on the way home, I, the bumps in the road were bothering me, but luckily the central midwife unit was five minutes away from our house compared to the hospital, which was like 25 to 30, which is where I gave birth the first time around. But because this was a low risk birth, um, I was booked to the central midwife unit, which turned out in the end to be a lifesaver because yeah, otherwise the baby would have been coming in the car but we'll get into that in a minute so we got home by this point it was about quarter past 20 past one in the morning maybe a little later maybe closer to half past one my husband was tired so he got ready and got into bed I had the foresight to put down um one of those like puppy pads or like dry night sheet things that you put down on a toddler's bed to stop them wet in the bed I put that down in my bed just in case I thought you know, in case any waters come or anything gross comes out when I'm sleeping. Um, I got into pyjamas and I lay down. I was honestly lying down for about, I don't know, I think I might have even dozed for five minutes. And then I heard like a balloon popping and a sudden release. And I thought, oh my gosh, my waters have just gone in my bed. So I kind of struggled to sit up, which again, like I said, was a protest. I was huge by this point, a whale. Um, it took me about five minutes to sit up and then I could really feel it coming. I had to wake up my husband because at that point it's almost as if my waters broke and suddenly labour and delivery was like coming straight away. So this was about quarter to two in the morning. Um, having been only four centimetres dilated at about 12.30. This is about quarter to two in the morning and suddenly the contractions were coming thick and fast. It's as if the waters just went and everything started moving. And I definitely couldn't talk through these ones. I was in a lot of pain, more pain than I'd ever remembered feeling the first time around. And I think that's because I was already well in hospital by that stage. Last time around, getting some gas and air. I only had gas and air last time, um, but still it made a difference apparently because this was really painful. I couldn't talk, I ba couldn't walk. I had to go to the toilet and sort of, sort of dry myself off and I had to get my husband to phone the midwife but I was oh my goodness it was so much so painful I can remember it like it was yesterday um and yeah my husband phoned the midwife because these contractions were coming every about 30 seconds by this point and I couldn't talk through them I really had to close my eyes hold on to something really tight I was holding on to the side of the crib and praying for them to stop um, and they would stop for a few seconds and then they would be on again and it was a nightmare um, trying to get dressed and things. So my husband phoned the midwives 
it was about 2am and we were supposed to give them 50 to 60 minutes notice and I thought I really ugh, this baby's coming like this I cannot stop this my body's doing whatever it wants and I cannot stop this so they said okay you know they spoke to my husband on the phone they waited on for about five minutes while I had about four or five or maybe more contractions they were like every 30 seconds they were just constant and she said right okay I it looks like we, we're having a baby now, so we're going to move. But obviously, you need to give us 15 minutes, so we'll be there as fast as we can. But that's all we can guarantee. That was not um, good news to my ears because I knew something was happening really fast. But um, yeah, we tried to get be calm, went down the stairs, saw my dog. She was absolutely terrified. Um, she, was, she had a tail right between her legs. She definitely knew something was going on I was in so much pain I had to stop every few steps and grimish and hold on to something until the pain eased and then walk a few more steps um, and that car journey was horrible and thank goodness it was only five minutes if I had been going to the hospital yeah I would have been in trouble but I felt every single bump the whole way there and we got there and I texted my wife we sat outside and um, we we're supposed to meet them at a &E sat outside in the car um, I texted my wife to say we were there we got there about I would like to say 20 past 2 in the morning and we thought we'll wait in the car for the midwives and then suddenly I just said to my husband this baby's coming my body's starting to push I can't stop it, I don't know what I'm going to do we have to get into Amy now you have to go and get someone I was like I can't walk, you have to go and get someone and he thought I was being a little bit melodramatic but then He'd never seen me that way before, so he did panic a little bit because I'm really not the over dramatic type at all. And like I said, I do have a high pain threshold. So when I told him that baby was coming, I meant this baby is coming. I, I can't stop it and I can't do anything about it. So he ran into a &E. There was no one there, which is so strange for a Saturday night. There was no one at reception. There was no one waiting. Um, so he went to the nurse's station and he managed to get me a wheelchair. So he brought out a wheelchair. I got in the wheelchair um, in the process I dropped my handbag and loads of money fell out and I was like leave it leave it and he's like no I'm not leaving there's money on the floor it was like you know 10 pound notes and things I was just like I don't care I don't care about the money and um, he's like scooping up the money from my, my handbag and making sure I had everything and taking me into a and &E. and we just went straight to the nurses station because that's the only place that there were people and um, the nurses looked absolutely terrified <laughs> To say that they had never delivered a baby before, um, yeah, their faces, when they saw me, they were like, um, have you phoned the midwives? And I said, yeah, they're on their way. Or, well, I didn't say it, actually. My husband said it. I could not speak. He said, they're on their way, but, you know, they're not here yet. Like, this baby's coming. We don't know what to do. Um, luckily, we had one midwife who did take charge of the situation. Um, and whilst she said she'd never delivered a baby, had no idea what she was doing, she got her gloves on, got me on a, on a, on a bed, and... Um, started setting up the gas in here and by that point I, yeah I could I was clearly very close to giving birth but she didn't know what to do so she just thought get you on the gas in here and just try and calm down before the midwives come if it's whatever we can do to slow it down for like 10-15 minutes while we wait for the midwives that's what we're going to do by the time she set up the gas in here I think I had it for about five minutes and then the first midwife turned up they couldn't do anything until two came, came up. Um, I think they need two to open the door of the central midwife unit. Um, but thankfully, the second one came just a minute or so later. Like, I can't even remember, but it must have been a minute or so. Um, and they said to me, they had a wee look down there. And they said, don't worry, can't see ahead, don't panic. Um, let's get you up to the midwife unit. And they took me up on the bed, which was thankfully... Um, I, thankfully I didn't have to walk anywhere but I did have to move from the bed to the other bed in the midwife ward and that in itself I honestly thought the baby was just going to fall out at that point um, because the midwife later told me that when they said they couldn't see a head at a &E, they were lying actually the head was there they could see the head but it's all psychological them telling me that they couldn't see a head just slowed me down a little bit whereas if they told me they could see ahead I probably would have had the baby then and there at a &E. but they managed to to get me up to the labour ward and one of the midwives said oh do you want to go in the birthing pool and I was like I don't care I don't care and she's like oh well let's fill it up to say that the birthing pool didn't even get a quarter of the way full before the baby had already arrived that's the truth and um, they hadn't even half filled it up and the baby was already there um 
The next more dramatic thing was um, I said to the midwife, I need to push, I can't, I can't stop it. And the midwife said, that's fine, listen to your body. If you want to push, push. And I said, can I get some gas and air or something? I was in so much pain. And the other midwife's like, it's coming, it's coming. And they told me later that unfortunately, whoever had used the gas and air previously had um, failed to change the canister. So there was an empty canister. So she had to faff around and try and find a new canister. I honestly had the gas and air for the two pushes that it took to get the baby out. And that was it. So... I honestly, yeah, I know how it feels to have a completely natural birth, but um, yeah, just the hope of gas near my head helped, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how I coped, but um, I did, I guess. You have to. You had no choice. Um, but yeah, when my body wanted to push, like it took over and I could, there was nothing I could do to stop this baby coming out. She decided she was coming and she was coming and it took two pushes. And honestly, I've only heard of that in movies. I've never believed that that could happen, but two pushes in the space of a couple of minutes and she was out and my husband just said that he just stood there and looked and he's like just couldn't believe it it's so surreal so surreal she came at 2 57 a.m and we didn't get to the hospital until about 20 past 25 past two and the baby was already delivered at 2 57 so if i'd been going to the other hospital where it was 25 30 minute journey yeah the baby probably would have been delivered on the motorway by my husband, absolutely terrified, waiting for an ambulance. <laughs> um, but the interesting thing is that the midwife said to me that her the baby delivered herself. She did all of the normal motions, like babies have to come out and turn a little bit and turn a little bit more and so on. They, they have certain motions that they need to go through and they usually go through them at each push. But she did it in one push and then came out at the second. And she said it was like fast forward and she's just never seen anything like it. And this is a midwife who's probably delivered hundreds of babies. And I just, I don't know, this one was just desperate to come out. She was ready to come and she wasn't waiting for no man. So um, she also came out with an arm in the air like Superman, like this. Um, and I heard, I had my eyes tight closed because I was in so much pain. Um, but on the second push, or I think it was, yeah, just before I pushed, I could hear the midwife say, oh you wee bugger and I thought what is the baby doing like <laughs> what is she doing um but yeah this was her coming out with one hand in the air like supergirl or superman um and what the midwife was concerned about was generally when babies do that they then pull their arm back and their elbow catches you and can really rip you which is not nice but this baby did not do that she kept her arm right up um all the way out and I didn't get ripped at all so <laughs> it was so amazing so fast I could not believe it suddenly this baby was on my chest and I was like whoa like how did that happen so quickly I just couldn't believe it um obviously they confirmed it was a girl and we named her Alethea Catherine Catherine after my late grandmother Alethea was a name that I've just liked for a long time and it means truth which I think is really pretty also, they said that she was delivered so quickly that um, she had a perfectly round head. And most babies who are delivered naturally have a little bit of a cone-shaped head, um, which obviously writes itself, you know, soon after birth. But she had a perfectly shaped he head and came out perfect like a C-section baby because she didn't have any squashing. She spent so little time in the birth canal that she was like a C-section baby, perfectly round, which is pretty amazing. And after she came out, she obviously screamed, which is obviously always a good sign um, and she fed within like a couple of minutes um, on me which was amazing because I had so much trouble breastfeeding the first time around but she just knew what to do she was obviously hungry um, and went for it so yeah so that is the end of our labour and delivery story not quite the end and um, because the next exciting thing or was exciting for me at the time certainly and um, she was delivered at 2 57 a.m and we left the hospital just a little after 9am on the same day. That's another benefit of a central midwife unit as opposed to a proper consultant led unit in that um, if you are healthy and your baby's healthy and they pass their basic birth checks, they can let you out within six hours. And also they don't even need to do the birth checks on your baby then and there, they can do them the next day. Although actually we did have them done that day before we left um, at 9am. Um, she would got her sort of like her thighs checked at her her hips, her hips checked, her eyes checked, her, um, the basics done. She had all that done. Um, but yeah, I had a few hours to 
cuddle my baby and then my husband cuddled her whilst I had a shower and we got given some toast and some tea and some biscuits and then basically it was like do you want to go home? I was like yes of course I want to go home and you go you're free to go and it was just amazing it's so different from the first time around I stayed two, two nights three days the first time around this time I was like a matter of a few hours and I was home and we got home just after like my daughter had got up and my mother-in-law had got her dressed and stuff and then we were able to come home in the morning and say meet your baby sister which was just amazing so there we go that brings us to the end of my labour and delivery story. Like I said, it was something like out of a movie, like I just never expected it could be. It was so much different from the first time around and it's definitely my last time. So I'll look back on it fondly, as much pain as I was in at the time. It was still amazing. It's a great story and she'll probably be sick of hearing about it when she's older. Um, so that brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Hit that alert button and I'll see you in the next video. Hi.